so many problems are caused when we start to draw when we're just beginners because we rush to pick up the pen or the pencil and to start drawing lines on the paper before we've properly understood the importance of these five truths. And sadly, that can mean time spent wandering in the drawing wilderness, not progressing very far or getting frustrated and starting to doubt that this was such a good idea to begin with. Let's start with the first one. I've put this point first because it's the most foundational of all these foundation points. It's the one that really is the most fundamental and that is when we begin to draw it's easy to lose track of the fact that the most important skill we need to develop is our ability to think creatively that everything we end up doing flows from our mind flows from the thought processes that we have that we develop and this is not just some natural automatic thing this creative thinking is a skill that we can and we need to develop because it's our creative thinking that we will use when we see a subject we want to draw that we will need to use to work out how we represent that object on paper using whatever medium we're using. How do we translate what we're seeing whether it's in life or whether it's in a photo or whether it's in our imagination, how do we transfer that with our pen on the paper and create the effect of realism that we want? I think the problem is, is that we just assume that I'm copying what I see onto the paper. But the truth is, I can't copy what I see onto the paper in almost every instance. There is detail there that is beyond my ability at any school level to capture. How could any of us draw a tree with the overwhelming detail of a tree in terms of leaves and the texture of its bark and branches and twigs and so forth? When I see any subject, I have to make choices about how I'm going to convert what I see onto my paper. And this translation process, the thinking, the decisions that I make in the end as to how I'll do that will determine how my drawing looks. And the problem is that so often we pick up our pen or our pencil and we rush to make marks on the paper without actually having worked out how we're going to translate the scene onto the paper. And when we do that, what we often end up doing is taking shortcuts that we don't even realize are shortcuts. So we might use symbols to represent a complex or a difficult or a challenging subject to draw. We might have a certain shape or a way of drawing, say, a tree. Children use symbols to draw trees and many other things all the times. The stars in the sky, the sun in the sky, a house with a chimney with smoke. These are all symbols. If we're not careful when we're drawing, if we don't think creatively adequately how we'll represent the house and the chimney and the smoke, we can start to revert back to these childhood symbols. Or another thing we do which is related is we can adopt symbols and create a pattern from them. So I create a leaf pattern and every tree I do, the area of foliage ends up having this leaf pattern pretty much just put all over it. Or if it's a brick building, I have a brick pattern. I have a way of drawing things that comes just automatically and it doesn't actually link back in any direct way to my actual reference. And this is why it's so unhelpful to copy the work of other artists, to copy their drawings. Because when I copy the marks on the paper that someone else has made, I don't have to do any of the creative thinking process because that artist has already done it and made their choices and decisions and put them on the paper. And the only thing I need to do now is copy. And while copying is a skill, it's not the skill I need to develop if I want to create original drawings myself. And this is why it's so much easier to get a nicer looking drawing, a more advanced looking drawing when we copy someone else's drawing than if we were to use the photo reference 
that they used because the hardest part, the most challenging part, is creatively thinking and working out how I would translate my reference into marks to put on the paper. And they've already done that. I haven't had to do any of that. But if I want to be able to create my own drawings, I have to train my mind to develop those skills to be able to make those decisions. There is a lot of thinking that should take place before we put our pen on paper. Don't rush to the action end. If we haven't thought things through, we won't know what we need to do when we hover our pen above the paper. And the danger is we'll start making marks on the paper before we really know what we're trying to do. And that will not encourage us in our drawing progress. And the number two thing we need to understand and very close behind in terms of importance is we need to learn and develop the skills of observation that we need to have if we're to observe in our reference what we need to observe to have a chance to represent it on our paper. I see time and time again problems in drawings that are clearly caused by inadequate observing. I see basic fundamental mistakes in terms of distances between things or angles of things, which simply come down to carelessness in observation that show a quick, oh yeah, I see what's there, and then I can do that. And then firstly, the reference hasn't been observed carefully enough or for long enough or enough times to get the angle correct. And then secondly, when it's been put on the paper, it hasn't been checked in any way before it's been locked into place and then moved on to the next thing. Because I draw a lot of architecture and in my lessons with students, it's often buildings and angles with perspective are significant. I just can't believe how really people who've been drawing for so long sometimes can get the angles so wrong and not have noticed. It comes down to not having observed what we've needed to see to place the angles correctly. And then it's not just getting the angle correct, but it's getting the whole line in the right place. It's getting the various elements of the scene placed in the right proportion and position to each other to create the effect that I see in my reference. Sometimes it's looking at the object. Sometimes it's looking at the space between the objects. Sometimes it's looking carefully to untangle things that aren't obvious, such as where the foliage of one tree ends and the foliage of another tree starts. I have a playlist of four videos on observation for drawing if you'd like to take a short and free course on observation for drawing. Third thing is that when I'm drawing, if I'm thinking that I'm drawing by using lines, it creates a very unhelpful way of thinking. When I'm thinking lines, I easily start to draw lines because that's the framework for understanding what I'm doing when I draw. I draw shapes using lines. And yet in reality, Lines are a very limiting framework to think and to use. Rather, I need to be thinking of using marks, some of which may be lines, but many of them won't, or they'll be very short lines. There may be a lot of marks close together or marks that follow a certain pattern of increase or decrease. They may be spots, they may be hooks, they may be just little irregular lines. And there may be a combination of marks layered on top of one another to create the effect of what we're seeing. An effect that lines, if we think of lines as being a continuous line that encloses a shape of some sort, then we're going to have problems. We're going to have problems too if we're thinking of shape rather than effect. Because what shape here am I trying to draw? I'm not trying to draw a shape. I'm trying to create an effect. There are a few parts where perhaps I'm trying to create a shape, but overall, I'm trying to capture an effect. And shape is a very unhelpful way of thinking of this 
because then it becomes overwhelming. There's just too many shapes. I have to think of effect. And the best way to think of drawing an effect is to think of using marks to do it. And that gives me a huge range of possibilities of marks I can make with whatever medium I'm using. It's not just in natural scenes. Though in drawing nature, thinking marks, not lines, is particularly helpful. But even when we have more form, often we can create a better effect, a better feel of reality by not rushing to and close our drawing in a heavy line, in what becomes in effect a heavy outline, but to select the marks that we make. Some of them continuous but light, some of them heavier, some of them heavier again, and some of them broken with gaps. By not limiting our thinking to line, we can create different marks in different parts of our object to create an effect of realism that we won't get just by getting outlines, even if they're very accurately drawn. They will look more cartoon-like and less real. And even in scenes where many lines are used, and many scenes, of course, have combination of marks that could be described as lines or more just as marks. But if we think of all of them as marks, we're more likely to explore the full range of possibilities of how I can put the ink on the paper to create the effect of what I'm seeing. Even when the object is quite clear, it's the effect of the object that will give it reality in my drawing. That's what I need to capture. And you can see how this goes back to carefully observing our reference. And it goes back to the creative thought processes whereby we translate what we're seeing into marks on paper. It's not putting these marks here. That's so much the challenge. It's choosing what marks to put where to create the effect. And if I'm a beginner drawing, I want to be thinking in this way from the start so that the practice I get is doing this. This next one is very quick. And that's when you're a beginner at drawing, don't make the mistake of thinking that you're going to be producing artworks. For some reason, drawing seems to have a different mindset for people than learning any other skill. If I were learning the piano, which I've never done, I would never think that if I started having lessons, that in a week or two or three, I'd be giving a concert. I'd be calling the neighbours in to see what I've done, putting on public show what I've learned. And yet, for some reason, there seems to be this feeling with drawing that when I sit down to start to draw, potentially at least, I'm going to create an artwork. Now, this mindset causes all sorts of problems. And I've talked about it in quite a number of other videos. But the two main ones are it puts pressure on me to be perfectionistic. It puts pressure on me to not make any mistakes. And then my focus starts to become not making mistakes. And I become timid and conservative in the marks I make on the paper. Instead of, as a beginner, letting me focus on the fact that I have started a learning process of learning a skill. And I'm going to start with a basic level of things, or at least not with any expectation of an artwork at the end. Because the focus is on skill development and taking the risks and the experimenting that I need to take to discover how I make marks and how I should make marks and what drawing the effect of what I'm seeing is and so forth. And secondly, it feeds into the false idea that it's all about natural talent and that if I'm able to draw, it will just flow out of me in some natural oozing process that doesn't really require much effort on my part. When all the time I shall be focusing on this is a learning process and I need therefore to structure my, my drawing as a learning process the way I would learn. And my final point is when you're a beginner, it can be overwhelming the number of creative possibilities 
even just within, if you like, graphic art. Will it be pen or pencil or charcoal or watercolor or pastels? Will it be mixed media? Often our desire is to explore everything all at once. But can I say, if we want to fast track our learning development, our skill development, it is far more useful if I stay in a narrow track for some time at the start. And what that track should be, should be the one that I most want to be in, the one that I most want to excel at, at the end of whatever time period I have. So if I want to learn to draw, say, freehand in ink, then that's where I should start. It's a mistake to think that pencil is somehow some introductory method to draw in ink. If I want to draw freehand in ink, I need to start drawing freehand in ink from the word go because there are different skills I develop doing that. And I won't develop a lot of them at all if I draw with pencil. If I want to develop skill in drawing portraits, then I should start with drawing portraits, not thinking, oh, I'll start with something easier. In the end, everything is the same. So start with the thing that you really want to learn to be good at because then you'll start developing skills in that from the word go. Then you'll be employing your creative process development and your observation development with portraits, with faces, or life drawing, or streetscapes, or animal studies, or landscapes, whatever it is that, that burns within you to capture in some way, start with that. Don't think you need to start with some watered down children's lesser easier version. Start with those things. And it's also important because if we stay in the one niche, in the one track, then we will develop skills deep within that. We'll develop deep skills in our thinking, in our observation, in our handling of that medium. And what we'll find is, is that if at some stage in the future, we decide to try charcoal or watercolor, a lot of those skills that we've learned by staying in the one place and going deep, will be easily transferable into the different medium. But if I spend my time hopping from one medium to another, then I stay shallow in all of them. And I never learn the skill of going deep, and I never learn the things that you learn when you go deep in one area. And as part of this, can I say, if how you want to learn to draw is to be able to draw freehand, then start by drawing freehand. Don't start by copying or tracing because these will not develop the skills that you need to develop to draw well freehand. It will be easier to get a nice looking artwork that way. And this goes back to that previous point about the danger of thinking I'm producing artworks. If that's where my thinking is, I'm going to be tempted to want a shortcut to a nice drawing and tracing or copying may let me do that. But I'm just wasting time if I'm not wanting to learn tracing or copying skills, because those things will not be useful for me in freehand drawing. So the clearer picture I have of where I want to finish will help me work out the best way to go there. Even if I am a self-taught artist and I have to navigate my own curriculum and materials. I hope you notice with all of these points that all of them take place in our mind before we put pen on paper. All of them are connected with the way we're thinking, the things we need to think, the things we need to see in our mind, the things we need to work out before we put pen on paper, and the goals and the aims that we have, and therefore the best way to get there. All of these things take place before we start to draw. So if you're a beginner, don't spend a lot of time wandering in the wilderness doing things that aren't going to progress your drawing development in whatever direction and in whatever way you're wanting to draw. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I think these things are so crucial and yet it's so easy to think they're not so important and to be impatient to start the drawing, to get down to business. Well, we can get down to business, but it may not be very happy business by the end of the session. Our mind really is the key tool we have for any creative endeavor. I hope this video has helped you to use yours more productively for your drawing journey. And look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, and whatever your thinking is 
before, during, and after you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.